But you need to realize that your purpose is actually hidden in your pain. Huh. And you're not alone. Have you ever felt like you're drowning? Submerged in the ocean of pain created by all of the tears from emotion contained that you just let out. It's almost like you've broken the chain. Finally get out. But only... Yeah, yeah, we back again. Brooklyn Basement Podcast. Another episode, of course. We're here with my man Willie Sweets. Today we got a, another special guest. We all fire. Legend. We were special guests. Yeah. Comedy OG. You know what I mean? I mean, O O G. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> putting in that word. I mean, Say it again. A G white, not <laughs> yeah. so white, not yeah. white yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> not white now. I like that one. That's so already. We Brooklyn. Already. We bring the Brooklyn natives to Brooklyn Basement Podcast. You know what I mean? Definitely, yeah. definitely. And this is a fucking basement too. Yeah. This is serious. <laughs> it is a fucking basement. Describe to them. The I way. swear to God, I think COVID started in that corner right there. <laughs> yeah. Right there in that corner, right behind that drape. <laughs> right behind that drape, that's where COVID started. Yeah, you right gotta there. leave the set alone. You yeah. gotta leave the set alone. We might get it. We might need a forensics team <laughs> just to analyze that. Nah, but this is good. I like this. this nah, is, thank you for it's coming. A beautiful hey, thing, nah, motherfuckers got you, me bro. on a nice little picnic table with no signs of a picnic. Ain't <laughs> nah, nah. But it makes you feel at home, right? You originally from, nah, for real. You originally from East New York, so have you seen some. You know, grimy spots out there. Yeah. So this is like. But usually strippers were there, but that's all <laughs> Yeah, that's but, what's you know, It's all good. So, AG, what's good, man? How's everything? Chilling, man. Just making it do what it do, man. On tour with Lunell. You know, oh. she got a Netflix special coming out. Nice. Um, and of course, you know, just behind the scenes, you know, just chilling with that. And, um, yo, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. I mean,. How can I say? We outside now, right? Yeah, that's we what the outside. kids say. <laughs> we, we, yeah, yeah, for real, right? We outside. And just loving life and just, you know, loving, the, you know, the business. I mean, I always understood that it's show business for a reason. You know, 20% is the show, 80% is the business. But the business has been going good, man. I mean, you know, I'm steady working each and every weekend. And sometimes, you know, I like to take a little break, you know, a week off type thing. And, and, and it's, thank God, you know, you know, post COVID, everything's been you know rocking. Nice. So during you know COVID, you was kind of not hitting the stage as much. Because there's nah, some comedians really, that were going out nah. there risking it all for comedy. Nah, you nah, wasn't that guy. Nah. Just like, Did nah. you do any any uh, online? Listen, the stocks ain't have COVID, and that's what the fuck was bringing me that bread. Okay, got gotcha. you. Stocks. You know what I mean? Um. Ag White. <laughs> right, I mean, nah, but nah. On the real, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't doing none of those. You know, fucking performing in a. Uh, 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 a parking lot and shit and honk your horn and I'm right. not doing all of that shit. Right. Nah. Never, nah. never did that. Nope. No but online it, shit neither? No online shows? I mean, I did online. I mean, you know, but honestly, man, you know, Will, we're comedians, man. That shit was and weird you know, as shit. shit was weird as shit because you don't get that, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. instant gratification. Mm -hmm. There's a delay and you don't know if they're laughing at your jokes and then all of a sudden you're looking on the Zoom and somebody's looking the whole other way like this <laughs> yeah. and whatnot and you're like, well, yeah. damn, I gave you three punchlines. I just I just knocked out three punchlines and y'all just is like, so what's going on over here? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you didn't get that instant gratification, you know, with the so, laughter, full laughter. But there were a lot of people that were doing it and they, you know, they got by. For the younger comedians that needed that stage time, yeah, I guess I mean, they, they you figured know, out a way. I, listen, more power to you type thing. I mean, I just wasn't a fan of it. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, yeah. and you know, of course, I mean, after like six months, you know, they started to open up a little bit, you know, with the six feet social distance and, you know, you performing instead of for 120 people, you're performing for 30 people mm -hmm. at six feet social distance. You know what I mean? So it was cool. And but that was instant gratification, Will. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. You you in you in there with them. Right. So thirty people laughing in you know in 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 unison because the joke is that funny. Boom! It makes good for you know your 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 uh, your, your feeling on stage and and just literally just you know on to the next type joke and 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 just really feeling that energy of the crowd as opposed to. You know, screen freezing, mm -hmm. and you don't know yeah. if that person was laughing. Then all of a sudden, you see him, like I said, stage right, yeah. and they're like, "Oh shit!" We're like, "Oh shit!" What did you did y'all get that? You know, so the first show that you hit after COVID, how what was that feeling? Were you still concerned? Or was you just like, Fuck "Nah, it? man, like, listen, man, I, I'm I." I <sighs> did you get the shot? Did I? 
<laughs> two of them, three of them. Fucking God, when it first came out, like it was Jordan. <laughs> you was online. So that motherfucker at right age, shoot your shot. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Motherfuckers in the hood, they like shit. I ain't taking that needle. Yeah, right. you better off finding that needle in a haystack before I take that fucking needle. They turned into the gingerbread man. They were like shit. Vax me if you can. I'm the gingerbread man. But nah, I I, I got it. You I got, got it. it. You know which one you got? Yeah, hell yeah. Which one you got? Yeah, bro. I make my vaccine sound lit. <laughs> I got the funky cold Moderna. <laughs> 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 ah. Yeah, might as well have fun with it, right? Hell yeah. Let me tell you why I got the vaccine. Let me tell you why I truly got the vaccine. All right, real talk. I remember as a child, in order to get into school, you had to be vaccinated, right? Yeah. You had to be. You had to take your shots in order mm-hmm. to get into school, right? Here it is. I'm 52 years old. I'm living with that same vaccine for 47 years. Now with the new vaccine, if I live another 47 years with the new vaccine, I'll clock the fuck out at 99 years old. Right. If you having COVID problems. I feel bad for you, son. <laughs> I got 99 problems with the vaccine one. Yeah. I guess people were fearful that the vaccine for COVID was made overnight versus some of the vaccines that we got. That How we're the ready. fuck did we know I years don't, back don't. then? How did we know? I, I Listen, man, you're talking to somebody that's pro-vaccine. I mean, honestly, you know. You get vaccines pro- you don't even need, right? He's like, fuck it, just line them up. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, it ain't that serious. <laughs> but when it's government <laughs> regulated, no, yeah, the regular, you know, when it, the when just it, in case vaccine. <laughs> just in case, you know what I mean? But nah, I just I just just felt it was the right thing to do, you know what I'm saying? And I got it and thank God, knock on wood, I don't have any, you know, side effects or anything like that. You know, I don't have a a third leg, a fourth leg rather. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm I, I'm good. I just took it because, you know, we had to do it. So I got one of the side effects. I was six two before the vaccine. Yeah, it made me shrink. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got the Johnson and Johnson. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get mine from the doctors though. I <laughs> got the Dollar General <laughs> fucking vaccine. <laughs> I got it from the plug. <laughs> <laughs> for the plug. Facts. <laughs> Good shit. No doubt. The plug. Yeah. Right so, on. So comedy. How many years, eh? How many years have we been doing this shit? You know man? what, Will? We never really like to to date ourselves as comedians, but I've right. been doing it. I've been doing it a long time. I've been okay. How many years have you been loving it, man? That's a different story. Good question. Mm. Loving it. Good fucking question. That's a fucking good question, dog. Uh, I still love it. I just don't like the behind the scenes shit. Of course, we never. Yeah, the the business part. Don't like. I don't. I mean, uh, for the art of it, I fucks with it wholeheartedly. Right. But the back end shit, the backstab, and the fucking you know Mm. comedians that don't do business right, canceling your show like a day before and expect you not to feel some type of way about that shit, that shit don't sit well with me and, and, and it has never sat well with me. You know what I mean? Because I know if I cancel a show, right. if I cancel a show, I'm going to make sure the promoter, whoever put on that show, pays that comedian. Right. And if they don't pay the comedian, then I will pay the comedian because I'm trying to keep, you know, good faith. I, I love that good faith mm-hmm. method, you know, keep it in good faith, do the right thing. And, and, and that's I, that's what that's one part I love about the business, because I love to, you know, put work, you know, in comedians. You know, I like to put that work, you know, when I can. Right. You know, if I'm not just, you know, getting stuff, you know, by myself. But I mean, I tell you, bro. I, I I I just the camaraderie, ah, camaraderie, camaraderie, the camaraderie. Well, you went to public school, right? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> it's the dog, baby. And it was that <laughs> fucked up vaccine, the yeah. first vaccine I got, right? Yeah, At five. <laughs> nah, um, nah. So you know, the camaraderie is there, but you know, it just I don't know, man. I just sometimes I just. I lose patience with it, man. Like, Mm. not everybody is always going to be on your page. You know what I'm saying? People got hidden agendas. And, you know, I hate to say it. Some some of these motherfuckers still use the street and and try to incorporate that, you know, post-COVID. That shit don't work, dog. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be transparent, man. You got to... 
you know, listen, A, I can't get you this week, but I'll tell you what, let me see what I could do in a couple of weeks. I got you. Right. But you know how much money I made in I got you's? Hmm. <laughs> I'm a millionaire with I got you. And I realized, Will, the transparency for everybody, and I, and, and I, realize, and I learned this the hard way. Because I'm so transparent, mm -hmm. I just feel everybody, everybody should be transparent. But it's just, like I said, dog, it's just not like that. And but that's just in life in general, not just yeah. in business. So yeah. Truly. Once money gets involved, I guess it gets a little bit more slippery and stuff like that. But True, AR. You yeah. know what? I, th I guess and that's... speaking of AR with up? money, that's accounts receivable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me reach out to my AR department. <laughs> accounts receivable. <laughs> yeah. No, well, matter of fact, fuck your accounts receivable, motherfucker. That's my invoice. I need the accounts <laughs> payable, motherfucker. Now. <laughs> Facts. No, but you're, you're, yeah. you're pretty transparent, man. I got to say, I got to do your stand of guy when it comes to, no pun intended, when it, stand of guy when it comes to the game itself, like being kind, honest, sincere, and telling motherfuckers the way it is and not how it might be. You know what I mean? Right on. That's why I w when I think of like OGs and who I would reach out to, you're always the first one. I'm like, nah. And I always got you, Will. The AG I don't always money, tells me to honey. Money, money, to, money don't mean anything when it comes to Willie. Like, even if even if Willie booked me for an X amount of dollars and he was making a little something, something, I, I, it wouldn't matter to me yeah, because I want I want you to eat. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I'm good. If I'm open, I'm going to do it for you. But that's just, you know, that's the camaraderie. Right. You know exactly. what I'm saying? But guaranteed, if somebody calls me on a day after and they want me to do the show... Because I let Will eat, you know, and I just took, you know, the minimal, minimal amount of money. The next person is going to eat that shit, hmm. period. I'm, I got to make my money back. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so it's like somebody having a sale. Pay. Yeah, somebody's got somebody's to pay the pipe. I call it you know a sale date. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. Facts. So it does happen that way. As an OG in the game, when you see a young comic coming up, or do you... Quit! Don't even quit. fucking do yeah. it. No. Don't, don't fucking do it. No. You don't take no. guys under the wing that, that are open to it. Try I, to teach I do the once I realize you're, you're, you're open to it. Right. right. They're you know, open to it. Whether whether it be, you know, uh, constructive criticism mm -hmm. or whether it be a compliment. If I feel something deserves a compliment, I'm going to compliment you. If I feel something deserves constructive criticism, I'm going to constructively criticize you to let you know this is not the way it's done but a lot of these young comedians man they don't they feel they fucking know the formula mm -hmm. right nah no, no you don't no you don't I, but see i realize the landscape of comedy has kind of sort of changed too it's more comedy with these younger comedians is more like conversational comedy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never came up like that. My, my, my thing was when I learned how to write a joke, it came in the form of a PSP, right. the premise, uh -huh. meaning what are you talking about, to set up, set it up, and then give me the punchline. Right. Give me an example of how that goes. Okay. So you, all right. So you got a PSP, right? You got the premise. What are you talking about? I come from Brooklyn, man. When you come from Brooklyn, you know, things in your neighborhood are usually different. Shit, my neighborhood's bad. Shit, my neighborhood's so bad, police pull each other over. Right. So now, forget, forget that. I don't, I don't need the round yeah. of applause. I'm just trying yeah, to no, dissect the joke. So the premise is I'm from Brooklyn. It's a bad neighborhood. The setup is when you come from a bad neighborhood, things in your neighborhood are usually different. Right. Neighborhood's so bad. Police pull each other over. So boom. So now you got the premise, the setup, and the punchline. But here's one thing that I learned, too, from Russell Peters, mm -hmm. right? And he told me, he said, G, the less words to the punchline, the funnier the punchline. Mm -hmm. The less words you use to get to the punchline, the funnier the punchline. But you can't tell these new comedians that because mm -hmm. everything is a fucking story. It's right. a long, drawn-out story, and boom, next thing you know, four minutes later, the punchline comes out. Hmm. I'm like, but again, like I said, the landscape has changed. Right. So when, when, I, when I realized that the landscape has changed, I realized, okay, I could still do the same type of material, but just slow it down and become more conversational rather than try to hit him in the head every two seconds. You know what I mean? Because a joke, a joke is supposed to be laughter. Laughter is supposed to be like every every six seconds. 
You know, right. whether whether you you know through your premise, through the setup, or at the punchline, it's got to right. be like every six seconds. But what about now, like guys that start out in like Instagram doing their comedy sketches and want to cross over to being a comedian, and they realize it's a different beast? Ain't no safety net in stand up comedy. Right. There's a safety net on this device. It's called a pause button. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can pause. You can't pause in stand up comedy. So I call those comedians that are on Instagram and everything like that, I call them social medians. They're on social media and they're comedians on social media. So they're social medians. But again, there's no safety net in comedy. So you get up there. And you try to do the same thing where you use the pause button two days ago. Ain't no pause button. Ain't no net. You know, when people walk mm -hmm. the high wire. Hmm. Ain't no net down there. If you fall, you fucking fall. You when know you what I mean? Bomb, so you bomb, you bomb. You bomb, you bomb. Exactly. You know what I mean? Ain't no safety net. So, you know, me as a, as a white comedian, you know, 30 years, because I told you I never like to date myself, but fuck it. <laughs> you know, doing it three decades, I didn't have no safety net. There wasn't any social media hmm. back when I started. So all my shit was straight talent. You know, white mm -hmm. kid, Jewish kid, grew up in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We never left the hood, have a house in the hood. You know, now white folks move in and like, you're new. <laughs> and I'm like, motherfucker, I've been out here since the street lights. He <laughs> said, you're new. <laughs> you're new. <laughs> I'm like, Seth, I will savage the shit out of you, you motherfucker. Yo, Poli police won't do shit, too. Yo, you white know what the one crime. thing I admire about you, A? You're probably the most confident motherfucking comedian I've ever seen, dogs. So you like, you believe in every fucking thing you say up there, bro. Bruh, listen. <laughs> but you know what? I'll tell you this. No bullshit. I'll tell you this, though, dog. You know, sometimes I'm scared of my own shit. Hmm. Because mm -hmm. I know... And that's what's been holding me back, too, though, Will. AR. My Achilles heel mm -hmm. is the fact that white folks don't get me. Mm. Meanwhile, they get black culture, but they don't get me doing black culture. That shit irks me to fucking no end. Mm -hmm. How the fuck did I grow up out there, right. still live out there, presenting myself in such a way and you still don't vibe off my shit. Right. But meanwhile, you let a, 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 a African-American comedian who does the same type of material, you let him shine? Right. Nah. So basically, I'm not white folks, Frankenstein. They can't program. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? They're not going to program me. You know they ain't Nah, nah, nah. Uh -uh. I'm, the, I'm the cracker. They let fall through the cracks. Hmm. Y'all figure that one out. But, you know, again, getting back to what you were saying, Will, with the, how long you've been doing comedy, how long you've been loving it. Loving it. I love it, man. Like I said, I really, truly love it because, you know, we get to travel the country, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We in a different city every weekend, mm -hmm. meeting different people. And I'm a people person. You know, even though that COVID shit shut a lot of shit down, you know, people still wearing masks and shit like that. But you know what, though, man? I'm a people person. I love it. I love meeting new people, new, you know, new style, uh, demeanor, and everything like that. I just love, love, love meeting new folks. That's, that's and the comedy, you know, right. we get to meet them like every night we perform. People come up to us at the end. Man, we really enjoyed your performance, man. You were great. You know, where can we find you at? Mm -hmm. You know, you got a website. You got, you know, social media. And here, yeah, you know, fuck it. Some people, yeah, just take my number. You know, I'll let you know where I'm at. And, you know, if I'm back in your city, we'll go to lunch and stuff like that. Shit like that, man, I love, man. Hmm. I just love. So so speaking yeah. of that, what, what would be a, the, the highlight of your life that comedy has brought you to that space that you're like, man, if it wasn't co for comedy, I wouldn't be here at this moment. That was just like the most memorable time. The most memorable time in comedy uh, was actually filming Martin Lawrence Presents First Amendment. Right. Washington, D.C., home of Martin Lawrence, did a show, did the show yep. for television. Mm -hmm. It was on Stars Network, mm -hmm. and getting to meet Martin at the end. Mm -hmm. Crazy shit was. I caught a standing ovation that Friday night. So Saturday, you know, I was actually, 
you know, backstage ready to watch the next day's performance. And, you know, you from Brooklyn, Will. ARU too, right? <laughs> the, the Nation of Islam, mm -hmm. right? The brothers with the bow ties and everything yeah. like that. But he had the fruits of Islam. Martin Lawrence was walking through, and they was like, yo, back up. Everybody clear the way. Here comes Martin. So he, he was with the brothers, you know, with the bow ties. The and fruits, security fruits guard. Of, yeah, the security, his security, yeah. fruits of Islam, mm -hmm. right? And um, he stopped them while he was, while he, hold on. Be easy. One second. Saw me sitting there. He said, hey, brother, I enjoyed your performance, man. You's a funny motherfucker. That's dope. Hmm. And you know what I said to him? Martin, what you saw last night, that was you. I grew up watching you. Hmm. And sure enough, he was like, oh, brother, we exchanged pleasantries. That kept it moving. That was the highlight right there. Hmm. And oh, also man. doing Showtime at the Apollo meeting Steve Harvey. You know what I mean? And bad That's boys, on Tubi uh, now. Your Bad Boys of bad Comedy boys of with comedy. Diddy. Met Diddy. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean. So, the Martin one. Martin one on was that. definitely the one that was just the icing on the cake. Don't get me wrong. Every comedian's dream coming up was to do its Showtime at the Apollo. This was before getting, your, jam, getting before. your own getting your own sitcom and everything right. like that. It was like, yo, I got to do it Showtime yeah. at the Apollo. But I came on. As a guest comedian, it was me and Brian McKnight. Hmm. Yep. Wow. 1995. So you're dating yourself again. No but doubt. That had to be, <laughs> that'd be a highlight right no there, doubt. too, in itself, right? What? That night with Brian McKnight. And yeah, the, but, you know. I mean, you know, again, it that was just, that was like the first highlight. Yeah. But the, you, you know, like you said, A.R., you asked me the ultimate, the ultimate telling you Martin Lawrence, yeah. him stopping his entourage to give me love. Like, he recognized me sitting right there. He could have walked right by me. Had the tunnel vision, boom, not even see me, whatever. But his peripheral, whatever, caught you know you. what I mean? Caught, caught eye, boom. Yo, I enjoyed you, man. Something He's like that just shows the ultimate respect for another person. Yeah. Especially in comedy. Yeah. Shit, could stop a by guy that's Lawrence. already on like that, you know what I mean? He doesn't, you know. Yeah, that's definitely mm -hmm. dope. So, already, I'm going to date you. How did it feel to do snaps with all the rest of those cats? Snaps is a... Come on, snaps, man. The, HBO, the one bro. HBO, HBO. That was HBO see, snaps. See, that's why... See, even now to this day, like, people start snapping and, you know, Jones and whatever you right, want right. to call it. And I'm like, yo, dude, I did that shit. I got drawers older than you, son. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, yo. Like, for real. You know, and then you got to hit the kids with, like, for real, like, who does that? And, like, right. for real, and, like, dead ass, and, like, really, yeah. like, what? Mm -hmm. Really? No hit cap. With the lingo. No <laughs> cap. And all them, hit, hit them with the fucking lingo and shit. <laughs> all that bullshit. Like, come on, son. Like, really, man, I got Fruit of a Looms older mm -hmm. than you, homie. You know what I'm saying? The crazy but, part is that you did it for real. Yeah, I did, did it. We, we, did it, we did it on HBO. As, yeah. Let me tell you, it was me. Ricky Smiley. A lot of y'all. Talent. Yeah, talent. Monique. Joe Claire, Monique. Some more. Tracy. Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Me. Artie Fuqua. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy Wilson, Mack. Wilson Vince. Wilson Vince. Very good. Uh, yep. Wilson Vince. Wilson Vince. And Uncle Jimmy Mack. That's the one that passed, passed away. away. Right. In the car. Uh, uh, Tracy Morgan's. Mm -hmm. uh, um, oh, uh, on the Walmart. On, yeah, the Walmart yeah. joint. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was beastie. That show was beastie yeah. when you go up there, when you think back on, wow, look who was on this shit back when. Yeah. They suppressed those on CDs too, though, right? I think, like, at one point. Yeah. We did, uh, it was, did it was like on TV album. and it was actually, it was an album it was and an it was album. a book. Yeah, it was a yeah. book too. It was a book. Snaps, I bought the album. Snaps one, two, and three. Yeah, I got the book. Snaps the one, book. two, and three. Yep. I was in, I was in a, uh, Snaps two and three. I forget what. So I, you had what? You had to give up the, the, the Snaps for the book? The rights to the snaps? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. But that was cool. I yeah, mean, they yeah, paid they snaps. paid us back then. I mean, they gave us a one shot, you know, one shot deal. But mm -hmm. side, you know, I still got the books in my house, so I'm, right. I'm good. That that was fine. It was just one one liners and shit. You know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. Your house is so small. We had to eat a large pizza outside. Uh, right. You know what I <laughs> mean? Shit like that. Yeah. You know, stupid shit like yeah. that. They they quoted and they was like, "All right, cool. We'll put that in there." You know. I know. I remember that one moment. I know you remember that one moment that uh, your man Will Savitz got on you because you finished the punch on him. Oh, yeah. He was like, yo, chill. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. Because you should have finished. Like, oh, cool. you knew the punchline before it was called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of called him out. I'm like, yeah. oh, well, nigga, you yeah. got to come better than that. Well, yeah. then, that's how I looked at it when he did it. Like, well, then you should do something, you know, that everybody doesn't know. 
Right. Then, you know what I'm saying? That he won't have to finish it. For That's real. like in a rap battle. Yeah, exactly. You're able to finish That was the first line, rap like, battle yeah. You just scenario. take that whole ego right there. So, Lunel, yeah. how's things going with Lunel, man? Is it, good, I mean, man. Good. We travel in the country. You know, um, she's another beast. Oh, my God. She's man. a beast. And not only is she a beast, though, she's just a great person, man. I right. mean, I have nothing. And, I mean, I have nothing but praise for her, man. She's 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 good. You know, um, she takes care of folks, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And she ain't no dumb motherfucker, you know what I mean? If she fucks with you, she fucks with you. Like, right. she's from she's from the Bay Area by way yeah. of, you know, Tallette, Arkansas. But, you know, she, she, I, I've seen her motherfucking size motherfuckers up like I wish the fuck you would <laughs> type shit. You know, but, she you know, or, or, you know off stage, she's a gangster too. Yeah. Real talk. But, you know, again, like I said, nothing but praise for Lou, you know, always fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? She always said, hey, I fucks with you because you are truly not a hack. (laughs) You're original. I love your fucking style. I want my crowd. I want the nation to see who you are. I believe in you. I fucks with you and you're going to rock with me. How did y'all connect? Through a mutual friend. Like I knew who she was and she knew who I was. But we met through a mutual friend, like our mutual friend put it together. Like, yo, I know A, Lunell, you need to really meet A. She said, I knew A from, you know, from the comedy shows and stuff right. like that. So it was just a mutual, a mutual friend that put it together. How long is that tour going for? Well, I mean, you know, as long as, I mean, of course I got my, you know, I'm doing my own events as well. You know what I mean? But um, Usually we get the router every three months, so it's, you know, three months at a time, and then, you you know, you, the router gets filled up, and then, you know, mm-hmm. the new router is sent. So, I mean, it, it you know, it's, it, it's good. It's, it's full. It's full. We're going to, you know, we got um, Buffalo coming up, and then uh, in, in um, uh, July we got uh, Orlando and Richmond, and then August, like, we're full. We got uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. So you you kind of like hosting with her though, hey? Eh? How do you feel? That's not hosting with her. you. No, do the regular no, set. No, 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 no. no sometimes, right. sometimes, sometimes we bring in uh, a host okay. to to you know to uh, break the monotony because right. Lunell Lunell likes for me to go on when the crowd is already settled in. Right. You know what I mean? Which makes sense. Yeah. And then you know, of course, like the first fifteen minutes would be the host. Right, and then I'll you know I'll come out. I'll do twenty five quick fast. I mean not quick fast like right, that, right. but you know, I'll do twenty five, make it do what it do, and then you know she'll come out right right after me. But there's a there's a video that actually plays all her credits and and um and it's beautiful, man. It's, it's some high end shit like hmm. like her on with Snoop Dogg and Jamie Fox and you know I mean different events and everything like that. I mean, it's a real A-list type of video. Hmm. And that, you know, once that's over with, she comes out, she comes out to the stand, you know, and they, they fucking love her. Yeah, she's a beast. You know, is traveling, is. does traveling still feel the same that it did back in the days as far as, like, the different cities or the crowds the same? Is it harder to perform now with everything being so PC and, like, kind of, like... You know, I don't, OG comedians, most of them, they're just like, I'm just going to do my material regardless, but for you, how's that? You been? answered it right there. I'm still doing me. Right. You know, and, and, hey, uh, real talk, the PC don't come out with Lunell's crowds. They already know, like. When, when you go to see Lunell. Right. That's off the chain. All that shit is out the window. That stay PC your shit, stay your ass the fuck home. You know what you're getting when you come to a Lunell show. You know she's going to beast out. You know what I'm saying? You know she, you no know filter. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? And she's going to say what the fuck she, she feels and she's hilarious. Yeah, you know she what I'm is. saying? Yeah. But, but as far as the PC, man, I just, I, I do characters. So I'm, I'm not really disrespecting the, the, the actual, you know, folks. I'm just doing a character. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you figure it out. You know what I'm saying? You you're going on the fact that, wow, this is kind of uh, this 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 right here is uh, authentic. Listen, man, I like to equate comedy as the NBA. Okay. Okay. Watch this. LeBron James. LeBron James. 
Right? Easy, remember, I don't know a lot of basketball. Okay, well, <laughs> nah, fuck nah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, LeBron James. <laughs> nah. nah, everybody knows I'll look into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> tell them, if tell you them. don't know LeBron James, then... <laughs> I know LeBron and, like, three other guys. <laughs> Hang it <laughs> up. <laughs> 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 All right, use Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know nah. him. No, no, Le- guy, I'm Le- fucking Le- with Le- LeBron James. <laughs> yeah. Shit, Will. This motherfucker here. <laughs> now... Nah. LeBron James is one of the best NBA basketball players right now. Okay? LeBron James can score 40 points whenever he wants. But guess what? Sometimes that defense is pretty hard on LeBron. Hmm. LeBron only scores 18 points, has 12 rebounds Hmm. and three assists. But because LeBron didn't score 40 that night, does that make him a bad player? Right. No. He just didn't score 40. But he had 18 points, 12 rebounds, and the motherfucking team won. Mm-hmm. But why didn't he score 40? That's how I equate that to the crowd. I can't grab them all, but mm-hmm. guess what? Nobody booed. I had a good time. That's it. You won. I won. Hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't score 40 every night. Right. I can't stand them all fuck up every night. Not every, not every crowd is a stand-up crowd. I mean, they stand up. They'll clap, but they ain't going to stand. Does that mean you... And, and here's another thing, too. What I learned, you're only as good as your last show, which means I could fucking stand them up in Detroit, Michigan, come back home and do a mainstream room and do okay. Hmm. Or... Not as well as I did in Detroit. Does that make me a bad comedian? No. Right. I just didn't score 40 that night, but I scored 18 points. I got through it, had a good time. Nobody booed. Nobody heckled. Nobody said, get this motherfucker off the stage. Good. That's and it. being in the game so long develops that mind state, right, where you, you understand. Absolutely. You understand that there's, you know, there's going to be certain nights as long as, like you said, you're not getting booed. You know you still, you know what I mean, you're in the game. Absolutely, That's 100. Awesome. Who'd you enjoy coming up with? Because there's a lot you came up with. Who'd you enjoy, like, wow. He Mike came... Troy, Brooklyn Mike. Of course. Yeah. That's my fucking OG, man. I, I used to watch him in the audience at Uptown Comedy Club. I'm like, yo, this fucking dude is crazy. Style, hold authentic Brooklyn style. Mm-hmm. But, of course, he, you know, he changed, he changed, he changed. Mm-hmm. But not, not for the bad. No, no, But, he, sure. you, know, you know, he's with Chris Rock. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, writing for Chris Rock and stuff like that. But, you know, he's an excellent stand-up comedian, man. Mm. Like, I mean, he can make a joke out of, out of anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, Brooklyn, I work, like- I work with Epps when Epps first came out. Okay. We did our first, our first show that we both traveled to was in Miami, Florida at Studio 183, right? And this was back in 94. And this was Epps' first time out of town from Indianapolis. Okay. It was my first time out of town from Brooklyn. Dope. Yep. Uh, Marvin Dixon brought us out. Dope. Comedian Marvin Dixon. He's in Atlanta now, but he's out of Miami, Florida. One of the kings of uh, Miami, Florida. Marvin Dixon. Brought us to Studio 183. We performed for nothing but fucking strippers and fucking drug dealers, yo. <laughs> in Miami, yo. <laughs> for real. It was yay, yo, everywhere. Oh, man. You know? How was that that first time being out of town, or like traveling for comedy? It was, cra- was, it was it? so fucking cool that I even asked. Now, you know, with all due respect, you ain't supposed to buy motherfucking man cologne. You right. know, but, you know, back then I was young and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, yo, I was like, man, I had a great time. Thanks for paying me my money. Listen, man, I want to do something for you. What cologne you like? And back then it was jupe. Okay. And I got that motherfucker. I got that motherfucker. Yeah. And he'll tell you, like, yo, hey, I still remember that shit. That was like, like a reddish color. The burgundy. Bobby. Burgundy. Burgundy. Yeah, Jew. Burgundy. Yep. 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 No doubt. Marvin. So, boom. Just, you know, got him. I said, yo, I'm going to send it down to you. I fucking FedExed it right to his crib. Yada dee, yada da. Boom. That was it. That We made that plug. And we've been cool ever since. So You right. You do your thing. Hey, you ever thought about acting? Nah. I'm not, really, nah. I'm not really into that shit, man. My 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 thing in which I'm working on right now is to really truly own a comedy club, man. Okay. I, I like that's it. Dope. 
you know, uh, back in the days, you know, I used to produce comedy events in movie theaters with, with Ray Dijon, mm -hmm. right? So we, we basically ran a fucking comedy club, you know, I mean, talking about, you know, 30 days worth of promotion, and we, we had budgets, we had, you know, ticket sellers, and we had... Uh, uh, we had to pay. We had to pay like at least twelve people were on our payroll. A whole so staff. we were basically yeah, a whole staff. We were running. We were running it through the actual, you know, the actual movie theater. Like we just used the movie theater as a not not saying on no no drug shit or nothing like that. But the movie theater allowed us to do comedy in there once every last Thursday of the month. Right. So you know, of course, once the event came. We we had the office, you know, doing our paperwork and everything mm -hmm. like that. So it was, you know, we 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 basically were able to run the comedy uh, like a form of a comedy club mm -hmm. at the movie theater. So with no alcohol, great. no alcohol. We did. We used to do hundreds of people with no fucking alcohol. Yeah, Let yeah. me tell you how. Fly and that was a big room. How many seats is that? That's room? a movie theater. Yeah, it was yeah, a but, movie but theater. It was, it was over four. It was over four hundred. Yeah. But check this out. Let me tell you how ill the shit was. Motherfuckers used to come dressed to impress because <laughs> it was every thirty days. We had people from the Department of Corrections, NYPD, the FDNY, because right across the street from the movie theater was the fire station. That's so over the there on Linden Boulevard. On Linden Boulevard, Boulevard. Yeah. yeah, near Elder Lane. And, um, you know, the firehouse, they would come, and the 75th precinct, mm -hmm. the officers, you know, would let us know, because, you know, we used to cross-promote inside of the movie theater. So, you know, the, when the officers were off duty, I guess some of them just came to the theater to see a major motion picture, mm -hmm. a movie at the time, and... um. They were like, yo, listen, we're coming back, man. We really enjoyed ourselves. We can't believe how you could turn a movie theater into a one-stop shop hmm. for entertainment. Because think about it. You and the missus come out to see a major motion picture. Denzel, Jamie Foxx, you know, Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, whoever brought you to the theater, mm -hmm. Ray Dijon and myself would get you to come back to the same theater mm -hmm. that you just saw a movie to come back and see live comedy. And the same comedians that you see on that t on that tube, that movie screen, yeah. are the same comedians you could come back and see right here. That was hard. So you're turning the movie theater into a one-stop shop for entertainment. So yeah. how, how long you guys ran that for? Ran it for 11 years, man. 11 years. 11, 11, 11 Eleven tough years, man, because Ray and I were both sticklers for making sure that this shit was run the fucking way it's supposed to run, hmm. and, and and it eventually became a well well oiled machine. And then you know, unfortunately, we had to we had to put it down because they changed uh, management. Like the old heads was fucking with us wholeheartedly, you know what I mean. But then the new heads kind of sort of were like, eh, we don't really get it. So we're gonna have to, you know. That's crazy. You know, you know when you're making Igger money, Igger money, yeah, yeah, yeah. they yeah. feel some type of way about that. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that's coming from a white guy too. You know, right. so I'm I'm guilty by association type shit. But you know, in all actuality, it never never would bad mouth national amusements. They were great with us, showcase cinemas. They were great with us. Mm -hmm. They allowed us to rock out. But the new generation that came in there, they 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 really were like, listen, uh, we're gonna have to kind of sort of pull the plug on this. And, and that was a positive thing because that's like right in the middle of the hood. There wasn't any, any, any like, incidents at all. So it's like None. In 12 years, man, right. we never had an incident. Never. You know why? Because laughter is the best medicine, man. And you know what? Ray and I kept our ticket prices at a, at a decent median. Hmm. Right? right? Okay. And basically, even though we were right across the street from the projects, mm -hmm. we didn't have the right across the street from the project's ticket price. We raised it up a little bit, and our clientele changed. And, of course, eventually the pink houses, you know, followed suit. They saved mm -hmm. for the ticket price because I learned from, from my folks that if you raise your ticket price, your clientele will change, okay? Perfect example. Back then, the movies were like 10 bucks. I don't even know what they are now. Shit, like, like twenty, twenty dollars, twenty five. I don't yeah, even because I don't even go to the movies. <laughs> yeah. you know, everything is fucking streaming Shout and all that thing. shit, right? So, long, long may, and and another thing is maybe those young um, executives with showcase cinemas, maybe they saw the curve coming, 
you know, with everything going to live streaming and streaming and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe they felt, listen, let's just pull the plug now because they might not do the numbers that they were doing back then. So they did us kind of sort of like a favor with that. But anyway, basically our ticket price was $10. Mm -hmm. No, they were 15 because the ticket movie, the movie ticket was $10. So Ray and I wanted to kind of sort of separate ourselves with adding a little bit more money mm -hmm. just to keep it, you know, uh, Hood friendly, right? right? So I got a call from one of our sponsors, mm -hmm. and they said to me, AG, why are your ticket price is $15? I said, because, you know, I'm trying to just make sure we're, you know, it's conducive for the area, and they really come out, and, and I think they can afford $5 extra. They were like, AG, raise your ticket price five more dollars. I was like, nah. That's $20. Yeah. <laughs> That's 10 more dollars. No way. They said, AG, look at the concept. $20. Bills, when they are distributed, come in increments of ones, fives, tens. And after 10 comes what? The 20. Yeah. 20. And then after 20 is a 50 and a 100. So if the ticket price is 15, they're going to give us a 20. Right. So we might as well get that shit moving forward. Get that whole $20. Back in the days, or even now, you, you don't have the cash on you, right? There was no real debit cards and swipes right. and all that shit. You know, and no scammers, thank God. <laughs> they, there were a few of them, but, you know, they had the bread for the comedy show. But anyway, so now you don't have the money. But you like that comedy show and you need that ticket. Where your ass going? To the ATM. And what does it come out in increments of what? 20s, mm -hmm. right? You want $100? Five 20s come out. Now you got a chance to pick the shit, but I'm talking about back then. You see what I'm saying? So you know, God damn it, $20 for the ticket? I got that. Yeah. Or even if you don't have to go to the ATM, check this out. Let's all go in our wallets right now. What's the fucking first bill we normally pull out? Your 20. A 20. So you don't see that. So now we're getting that $5 on every customer. And it was never, you know, to insult the customer, but it was basically helping our business. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because even if you say the price is $17.50, mm -hmm. you might as well get that $2.50 and say the price is $20. Nowadays, right, you make a, a, an event because of the, you know, economy. You make an event $40, motherfuckers going in their pockets for two twenties like it ain't shit. Yeah. If you say 35, they're going to give you 220s. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you want to keep it 35, boom, they give you the two uh the give you the 220s, make it $40, boom, you got $5 towards a drink. Hmm. But you got that $35. Right. Or rather than 30, now you're giving them a chance to give you two bills, a 20 and a 10 or 220s. So if you make it 35, you force them to go to the next increment. Because if you say 30, they're going to give you the 20 and the 10. Hmm. But if you say 35, now you're asking them for three bills, a 20, a 10, and a 5. Who the fuck has that? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Two 20s. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. might as well get that motherfucking bread. Or you work with them and say, my ticket price was really 30, but I'm saying 35 because I know you're going to give me 40, and I'm going to give you $5 back hmm. to make you feel like you didn't get hit right. over the head. Because my ticket prices were really 30, but I made that five, but I gave you that five back from the 40. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, ju 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 unit. <laughs> Writing that one down. <laughs> Write that down on low. No Bob doubt. Sure. Winning so. some subscriptions to the podcast at $35. <laughs> no doubt. You don't have to edit that out. <laughs> Fact. So. No, no so, 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 11 years, that's a great accomplishment. You made a big stamp in. in and comedy in New York in regards to that because mm -hmm. other people I'm sure follow suit after that and um, you, gave, you gave a lot of states time to comedians do that, right? Oh, yeah. So you I was feeding network. comedians, yeah. man. Hell, yeah. So yeah. if there's anything else you could change coming up in the game, what would you change? Is there anything you would change coming up in your journey? Is there anything that you would do different? I mean, you really nah. can't see it? Yeah, you really nah, can't see man, it? Nah, man, I, I love it for what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? It's... it's, it's I mean, a lot. I, I, I've to this day, man. My, my dream, my dream. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's just backtrack for a second. My dream uh -huh. was truly to be a major league baseball player, mm -hmm. right? For but the here, Mets, 
I'm just kidding. I know, I know. I know, I know. I was just testing. I'm, I'm, that's I'm his fucking, little I'm one foot out the door. Yeah, you already know. No, no, that's his you already sports fucking know I'm one foot out the door. <laughs> no, that's his sports joke. Leave it, that's his sports <laughs> joke. That's all he knows. That's, that's all he knows. That's all he knows. The fucking mess. The mess. The mess. The mess. The mess. That's all he knows. The fucking mess. <laughs> mess over there and flushing. They're gonna be flushing the toilet soon. <laughs> Trust me on that whole fucking season. But nah. Uh, so what position, eh? Catcher. Catcher. Really? Yeah, not back. You know, black folks say back catcher. Red back catcher. Catcher. It's just I was catcher. a catcher, but you know, I was short in stature. You know, my my arm wasn't that good, but that was my dream. Mm. And my high school coach told me, you know, he said, "G, I'm not gonna say the government, but he was like, G, he said, just bow out gracefully." Hmm. Damn. Why? Because <laughs> motherfucker he, wasn't. He, he added it up. He was like, yeah, motherfucker guy. wasn't Major League Baseball ready. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so here it is. That was you know in, in the late '80s. Okay. Fast forward ten years later, I'm doing a show in Tampa, Florida. Mm-hmm. Come mm-hmm. off stage, dude walks up to me, and I'm like, "Yo, this guy looks familiar." He said, "Man, A. G. White, I'm a big fan of yours." He said. Yo, can I get your autograph? I said, no, motherfucker. I'm a big fan of yours. Can I get your autograph? Mm -hmm. (laughs) He's like, you know who I am? I said, yeah, I know who you are. You're Derek Bell. Wow. The right fielder (laughs) for the Houston (laughs) Astros. Right. So so here it is. That was in 99. No, it was in. Damn, D was in 96. Let me, Mm. let me, let Because, you know, I'm I'm getting old, bro. (laughs) So it was 96 that I met him. Because I had like four years in the game. And after I met him, he was like, yo, dog, take my number. Mm-hmm. When I come in to play against the Mets, I want you to come out and have a good time. I want you to enjoy yourself with your family. Hmm. I said, come on, man. Don't bullshit me, man. I said, yo, Derek, that was my dream to be a major league baseball player. So look how it is. And I know a lot of baseball players now oh, to this yeah. day. Tori Hunter, Latroy Hawkins, Ricky Gutierrez, CeCe Sabathia, Matt Lawton, all of these Jock Jones. I mean, I'm like Carl Everett, I'm fucking, I could call them and ask them for, you know, whatever. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Not necessarily, no finance. I don't do that shit. Right. Uh, you know, with all due respect, knock on wood, I'm, I'm Gucci. But as far as like a friendship thing, yo, right. uh, you know, uh, I, c- can you call somebody? I want to get in the game and, you know, and, and, and can they leave me tickets? Now everything is through a fucking link. Yeah, I got <laughs> you, no problem. They'll send you the link, you know, just, you know, right. go, to, go to your ballpark app. Anyway, so Derek Bell was the first person to introduce me to all that shit, man. Mm. Like, yo, I got you for tickets, anything. And then he played on the Mets in 2000. Motherfucker, the Mets had 81 home games, Hmm. right? Mm Because the season was 162 games. Mm -hmm. So 81 on the road, Hmm. 81 at home. Right. Motherfucker, I must have went to about 70 of them bitches. <laughs> yo, you know what I loved about Derek? Derek would say, yo, I got tickets for you, no problem. Right. Whoever you want to invite, no problem. But guess what? You in charge of the tickets. In other words, don't bother Derek. Right. You're in charge of the tickets. How many do you need? Yo, D, I need eight for tonight. I want to bring in a couple of promoters that really enjoy, you know, baseball and stuff like that. They know the game. And he would, you know, of course, at the end of the game, we would go down in the locker room area. You know, if this was way right. pre-COVID than a motherfucker. <laughs> Nowadays, you can't do that shit without a pass and everything like that. Even though I was on a, you know, on the actual uh, pass list for the New York Mets. But do- I'm telling you, man, those were fucking life-changing experiences, man. Dope. Like, he played for the whole year. It was nothing but, like, I would invite fucking my mechanic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Motherfucking janitors. He was just flexing you know, on everybody. Yeah, I was flexing. just flexing like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was, and, and D didn't want it. D didn't give a fuck. D was like, how many do you need tonight? I said, D, can I get 12? All right, dog, got you. But the crazy shit was I had to meet 12 motherfuckers because there was no links. Right. Yeah, here's your tickets. Here's his tickets. Yada dee, yada so what da. you're saying is that you've been to more Mets games than Yankee games. <sighs> Got him. See what? Got, Got him. It's time for him to go. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> nah, but, you know, of course. It's baseball, though. He loves the game. <laughs> I, 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 I love the fact that. <laughs> but 
that was my boy. He played, right. you know. I right. mean, listen, I'm an I'm an I'm a New Yorker, man. I'm a that's New York it, that's fan. What it, that's what I wanted you, know, you to know say. What I'm saying? That's you know, what I wanted you to say. I'm that's a New York it. fan Either all day. Way, yeah. But you know, I like to I like to fuck around and, and, and kid with the uh with the Mets and shit like that. But yeah. I'm a, I'm a I'm a diehard Yankee fan. But you know what though? I just I love sports though, man. Nice. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I love sports. Okay, switching it up a little bit. You said you're a New York fan. Brooklyn or Knicks? I'm a Brooklyn fan. And okay. I'm gonna tell you why. Mm. Fuck Interesting. Fuck the Knicks mm-hmm. after what they did to Charles Oakley. I'm sorry. I just Oh, when they kicked him out the kicked stadium him out type the shit? fucking arena and banned him from the fucking arena. That's crazy. You don't fucking do that to a motherfucker that damn near brought you a fucking title. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for fucking Charles Smith blowing up them fucking eight layups. Right. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> rebound. Missed layup. <laughs> rebound again. Missed layup. Right. So, you know, I mean, I, I'm just I'm an old head like right, that. You right. know what I mean? So I, even though they got they had some star power there about two two three days ago, they had Melo there, Amari was there, right. fucking um, uh, uh, you know Spike was there, Aaron Rodgers was there, you know I mean the whole I mean it was star power. Right. You know, motherfuckers is happy to see the Knicks in the second round. That's what it is. Yeah, it's been a long right. time. It's about been a ten long years. Time. Been, about, it's ten been years. about ten years. Yep. Yeah, since they've been sure enough, no doubt for so. sure. And, and and it'll be another ten years because they're about to lose <laughs> fucking tomorrow. Yeah, they're about to whatever shut day, it down. whatever day. No, tomorrow, airs, yeah, yeah, they'll be the, tomorrow's fucking, game. The, fucking the, six. The Knicks will be in fucking the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. You know. So yeah, they'll be gone. Thanks for sitting this one out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it got too deep in the basketball yeah. shit for me. You right. know? Yeah, yeah. yeah sit this one out. <laughs> so you favorite mark, basketball you player? Mark, you can mark yourself safe. <laughs> yeah. So no, favorite no, basketball player? Favorite basketball player? Yeah, all time. Oh, all time. All time. Larry. Larry? Yeah. Ooh. Bird. Larry Bird. Larry you know, Larry. that one I got. That one I got. <laughs> Larry, Bird. Larry the cable guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry, nah. that, he's a tough Larry, cookie. Larry, Larry, Larry was good. Larry's yeah. a tough cookie, man. I, I'm just not, I'm just, I was never a Jordan fan like that. You know what I'm saying? What? I just, I, mean, I just. I don't know. I just, I, I mean, he's Michael Jordan. Right. But I wasn't a fan of him. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? He was a great athlete, great NBA player, but, you know, motherfucking Larry. Right. You know what I mean? And then I don't want to hear no motherfucking race car. <laughs> ah, white guy going for <laughs> Larry was nice. Yeah, Larry was Larry nice. Larry was nice. Larry was nice on the, you yeah. Know. But they slept I mean, on him. New school, though. I love Devin Booker. Devin was, yeah. I was just talking about that Booker. behind the scenes, yeah. Booker. You know why? Not only is he a fucking good shooter, dog. I mean, he can pick his spots on the floor and just book it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Walking bucket type shit. But you know, I just like the fact that he got hard, though, dog. Even if he, even if he misses, he's still gonna come at you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, if you're not subscribed already, press that red button. It'll cost you no money. You ain't even gotta give me no weed. This is the Brooklyn Basement Podcast. When we talk real shit, and when you press subscribe, it helps us in the YouTube algorithm so you can see us more often. So press that red button because we need you to do that shit. Like right now, please. Russell Peters, uh, they interviewed him and they was asking him who's one of his favorites, who's his man's in the game, and he mentioned you. I was like, yeah, man. Oh shit, AG knows Russell. Russell's like a that? dynamite guy, yo. Let me tell you something. Now, that motherfucker there. And I don't want to say the word motherfucker, but it's a term of endearment. You know what <laughs> But that brother right there, Russell Peters, I mean, on stage, he's he's phenomenal. You know, you sit there and like, yo, this dude can make a joke about a fucking cabinet drawer. Hmm. You know, whatever it is. This right. motherfucker can make a joke out of a, a fucking uh, a speck on the floor hmm. type shit. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. He's so spontaneous and, and original. Mm-hmm. You know, all these new, you know, uh, Indian comics and stuff like that. I, I'm i like, yo, Russell Peters, that motherfucker's been doing it three decades before you. But I say that to say this. Like, stand-up-wise, he's phenomenal, but off stage. You know what he said to me one day? I was like, Russ, man, thanks a lot, man. You're a great friend. He said, AG, we're not friends. Huh? He said, we're family. Hmm. He said, wow. You know, COVID what? hit. You know, he reached out. You know, motherfucker did the right thing during COVID. Because, you know, again, like I said, you know, we, you know, we don't talk figures, right. numbers, you know what I'm saying? But it was, it was 
at the first part, the first part of COVID, it was, you know, literally tough. Right. And he was like, you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. He said, are you good? I said, Russ, I'm good. He said, okay, do me a favor. Send me your cash app. I'm going to have my assistant send you something. I said, no, don't please don't do that. Don't do that. He said, let me tell you something. In life, in life, what's the most important thing? Health. Health is one. Most Family. important thing in life, what's the, f- what's the three, I should say? What's the, and we can edit around this, and you could just cut into it. <laughs> yeah. The three major things that you need in life is food, clothing, and shelter. Mm-hmm. So what's the first one? Food. Right. He didn't want to give me money towards finance. You know what? Here's this money for groceries. Mm. I said, bro, no, I ain't nothing. Listen, please. Hmm. If you don't take it, I won't talk to you again. So he was adamant on that. You know what I mean? Had his assistant call. Ag, what's your what's your method of payment? Hmm. Told him. Zip, zap, zoom. That type shit. And, you know, of course, because he's on that level, you know what I mean? But he didn't have to do it, and I don't want him to do it. Right. But when he said to me, no, bro, if you don't accept my offer, right. I mm-hmm. won't talk to you again. Hmm. And he was emphatic about that shit. So, again, dynamite guy. Love him to death. And, of course, you know. And also. But, but just so you know, yeah. like in a situation like that, right? It, just in the future, Brooklyn Basement will take your donations gladly, so we can upgrade some of our studio. Yeah. So if you want to, okay, know what but I mean? you, if you just give you us need food in the refrigerator. We need because <laughs> that's uh, what I got the money from the food. <laughs> Listen, we need food. If you we open need. that refrigerator, he'll see. That I know somebody it. that knows somebody <laughs> that, that can get the you them stamps, <laughs> motherfucker. Give we got the EBT, motherfucker. <laughs> Not only did I do BET, I'll do EBT <laughs> to make sure you motherfuckers get some food <laughs> in that refrigerator. That shit, that shit is empty as fuck with water. There right now. So the fuck, I can see the goddamn <laughs> laundry <laughs> from the refrigerator. That's the stuff. So that's it. The whole time. That's it. This oh, is shit. it. Wrap Yo, it up. No doubt. So thanks, AG. AR. It's been appreciate a pleasure. Appreciate you 100, man, Willie. You know definitely what it is. appreciate fuck you. you. Yeah, no you know what it is. Dude. Hey, Your OG AR, in the comedy 100. game. Part, appreciate part, that. Part, let me nah, it's all right good. Yep. You're OG in the comedy game, and you deserve to be, you know, recognized for that. And we appreciate your time. And Many so blessings, eh, man. You because you already you've gave a lot of blessings out already. Appreciate yeah. that, fellas. And, and we'll enjoy. give you our cash app name, and you know, if you want to spread it right amongst your <laughs> okay. Facebook friends. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Come yeah. over, nigga. Come right. over. And just uh, look call into, my agent. <laughs> look into that camera for us, and just give us a drop. Brooklyn Basement Podcast, and let the world know that this is the best podcast that you've ever been on, and we're the best hosts. And this is a very lovely. You know, struggling Look, basement. Too much, too much information. <laughs> right. What's up, y'all? It's A.G. White. Not so white. Not white now. Gentrification ain't got shit on me. So check this out, y'all. You need to be here in the building, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here at the Brooklyn Basement Podcast. My man, A.R., my man, Willie Sweets, Willie Ramos, in the fucking building. Mm-hmm. Make sure y'all check this out. Once again, y'all, it's the Brooklyn Basement podcast. Holla at your boy. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's the Brooklyn ooh ooh in there real quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right.